Good morning, everyone. My name is Amanda Holcomb. And I'm Brooke McGinnis. And welcome to our first Brunch and Learn. Since the museum is unfortunately closed to the public during this trying time, we still wanted to be able to bring some art to you. So each Thursday, Brooke and I will be zooming in and we're going to share some different art and uh, exciting things from our collection or what would normally be on exhibit. Now this week, we're going to be sharing with you the Helen Keller Art Show of Alabama. Now this is an annual tradition for the museum where we feature young artists that, are, that live right here in Alabama. Uh, anyone from K through 12 can participate and we have 40 artists on display at the museum. So what we've done is that we've made this digital tour format and Brooke's going to walk us through some of the different pieces that we have on display. Yes, so um, when you um, go into the virtual tour, this is the front page and it is interactive. So you just press start and here you go. We've got table of contents, a little bit about Helen Keller, uh, a little bit about her legacy, and then of course um, the exhibition. Um, so all of the students that are part of this exhibition have some sort of visual impairment blindness or they're deaf. Um, and so it's really inspiring, I think, to see the work that these students create. Um, it's also really cool to see it kind of on the cusp of Youth Art Month. So we've just got, uh, you know, we've seen all this wonderful work from Youth of the Wiregrass, and now we're getting to see work from students all over um, Alabama. And of course, this exhibit is juried um, statewide, and the winner of the exhibit will be housed um, permanently in the permanent collection in um, Tuscumbia, uh, Helen's uh, childhood home, which is really cool. So the, the winner of the exhibit uh, will get to be um, exhibited permanently there. So when you want to go, you just click through here. Um, and then if you want to start the exhibition, uh, there's a little bit about it. And of course, we've got these great arrows. So it's super easy to use. Um, I think what's interesting about this, um, first of all, obviously tactile art, the texture is going to be really important. So we see a lot of great use of texture, lots of paintings that we really want to touch, uh, <laughs> which is always a problem, I think, for, for us. We, we want to touch things. Um, but also but, the- Well, and with this exhibit, this is one that they actually encourage people to touch and interact with, which is really wonderful. It's the one time that we can actually get our hands on the art. So if you're one of those people that gets in trouble at museums as I am and my friend Pam is, um, I can't tell you how many security guards we've had. Yeah, uh, last time we went, I can't even remember where we were. It might've been DIA in Detroit, but there was a Van Gogh and there was a line there, but it wasn't behind glass. So we just kind of like <laughs> had our feet behind the line. <laughs> and of course the security guard was like ladies. But um, anyway, if you're one of those type of people, uh, this is a great exhibit because you can actually touch. Um, so again, as you move through, uh, like look at this. I mean, there's just such wonderful uh, texture, really interesting use of materials. Uh, but I think what always astounds me, this will be my third year viewing it, is the really vivid use of color. Um, just bright and vibrant. Um, and I, I just, again, if you consider the, the students that are making this, I think that's really incredible. Um, so many beautiful pieces. Each of them has a little bit about the artist, which is great too, so we get to know about them. But I'm going to share with you um, my favorite piece. So I am going to exit out of here because I already have it up. Um, there we go. So this is The Wanderer uh, by Kaylee Gable, and she's a graduating senior at Alabama School for the Blind. Uh, what I love about this piece, I think what struck me first, um, is how geometric it is if we look at the design. Uh, but you know, I was just talking about bright, vibrant use of color, and this piece is kind of dark and purposefully so. So again, it's kind of sophisticated, again, considering uh, that we have students that have visual impairments. Um, so yeah, I talk about bright colors, and of course, I'm drawn to the dark one. That's, that's me. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, it's dark and kind of mysterious. Um, but this, what I really love too, is once I loved it anyway when I saw it, but then when I started reading about it, she's also a writer. So this is actually inspired by one of her short stories. And it makes me want to read the short story. I look at this, it, it's mysterious. There's so much going on. They've got these sharp angles and it really makes me want to read the story. So I love work that um, propels me to investigate further. And I think this is one of those pieces that does that. So I, I absolutely love it. I think it's really great. Um, so we challenge you to go through the process, look at the texture, look at how they're using color, and find your favorite pieces. Um, this is my favorite, but I could probably talk a little bit longer about several others, but I'll let you guys do the investigating um, and find your favorite pieces. Well, wonderful. And while we have you, we did want to share uh, 
a tried and true method to kind of experiment with a different way to create. And it's actually called a blind contour drawing. And honestly, the last time I did this, I was in college. Uh, it's one of those things that drawing professors are like, this is a great challenge, you'll really enjoy it. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna switch over to where I'm gonna share the screen with my phone, this acting as my camera. And uh, I'm gonna walk you through the process and how to create your own um, blind contour drawing. I'm gonna cheer her on. Go Amanda, go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so I have my camera set up. I just have a piece of paper and a pencil. That's all you need. If you have a pen, an envelope, truly any kind of uh, writing utensil and any scrap piece of paper will work. My subject matter will be this box of tissue. And I have it set over here so you can see my eye lines right over in that direction. So make sure to call me out if I look back down at my paper, which is in front of me. Ooh, the okay. idea, yes, Brooke will, Brooke will keep me in line. <laughs> so the idea with the blind contours that you are only looking at your subject matter. And this can be challenging because of course, you might be drawing with a continuous line, which is what I'll be doing or you really wanna pick up your pencil or your marker to go back and make corrections. And also I have that eraser there, which just really wants to be used as well. So the idea with this is again, to not look at your piece of paper, not look where you're drawing, only look at your subject matter. So again, I'm gonna, uh, oh. I just, I hit things, I'm sorry. So I'm gonna be <laughs> looking over here and my piece of paper is in front of me. So I'm gonna start drawing and we'll see what we get because it, it will not be a perfect tissue box, but that is okay. Trying to get some of the folds of the, of the tissue. All right, well, there's, there's my tissue box. <laughs> it looks like a tissue box. <laughs> It's a very abstract tissue box. I'm definitely, um, yes, it's abstract. That's exactly what we're going for. Um, so we really hope you enjoy tuning in with us on this Lunch and Learn. And we look forward to joining um, everyone next week. And we'll be talking about Kevin Irwin's Wiregrass Dragon. Bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>